In my last video, I thought I mastered affordable smart home PCBAs using JLC service. Until you guys schooled me in the comments. Thank you for your tips. I discovered I could have easily saved over $50. Today, I'm sharing everything I learned about designing PCBs in KiCad, specifically optimized for JLC PCBAs, lowest possible prices. Watch till the end to avoid all my costly mistakes and maximize your savings on your next project. This video isn't sponsored by JLC PCB, it's sponsored by me and my passion project, a fully local ethernet powered smart home room sensor that keeps your data completely under your control. I built this for myself, but if you're interested, Visit playduino.com slash sensor to join my mailing list and tell me which sensors matter most to you through a quick survey. Thank you for your support. All right, let's save some time and money together. So the first thing that I would like to show you is a tool called KiCad JLC PCB tools. It's this GitHub project here and it's amazing. Shout out to Boney for creating this awesome project. And also thanks to all of the contributors, of course. So this is a plugin that you can install in KiCad. The first thing that it does, it, it allows you to create all the files necessary to order your PCBAs, but it also allows you to search the JLC PCB parts database, which is absolutely amazing. It's not guaranteed to work all the time because they need to keep up with API changes in order to keep this tool working. As of right now, it doesn't work with the latest version of KiCad, with version nine that was just released. So you have to stick to version eight for now, but they're actively working on support. So in order to install this, let's fire up KiCad and go to the plugin and content manager. And here you have the KiCad official repository with all of the official plugins that you can install. And by the way, there is also the JLC PCB fabrication toolkit that I used in the last video. So if you only want to generate your production files, then you can pick this official tool. But if you want to have all the functionality, you should install this plugin here. So let's copy it and go to manage, add a repository, enter the URL, okay, save. And now you should be able to select Boney's KiCad repository here and then install KiCad JLC PCB tools. You need to apply the pending changes and then it's installed. Let's create a new KiCad project, test. So let's start with the schematic. Resistor and maybe one more and then maybe a capacitor. And I will just connect them Oh, and by the way, if you're using your trackpad like I do here without mouse, this is really annoying. So you go into the settings and at mouse and touchpad, you can set it to the trackpad defaults and then it just works perfectly. That's amazing. Let's assume we need a 10K resistor here and we need a 11K resistor here. And then uh, 100 nanofarads, I don't know. Let's go, okay. Very simple circuit. Let's save it and go to the PCB. So first let's create an outline for the PCB. My PCB will have a size of, let's say 50 times 50. You can always change that of course. And now I don't have any parts. We need to import it from the schematic, but I didn't assign any footprints. So if I now press this button where we update the PCB from the schematic and run it, it doesn't work because there is no footprint assigned. So let's see if we can assign some footprints by using JLC PCB tools. Now, if you open this up, it takes a lot of time. It needs to download all of the parts. This will take some time. All right, then we're done and we see nothing. Amazing, why don't we see anything? Well, I guess I have to assign footprints so that JLC PCB tools knows 
what it should search for. If we switch to the schematic, I just saved the value 10k resistor. Right now KiCad doesn't know if I want to place a resistor that looks like this or one that looks like this. How would it? Both can have 10k. So I need to assign a footprint. Let's search for a useful footprint here. 0603 surface mounted resistors. Very tiny. Very cool. Let's use that. Okay. And I also need to assign a footprint here. Yeah, I will go with the same footprint. And then I also need to assign a footprint to my capacitor. Let's also use this same size here. Okay. So now I assign footprints, I can save and I go to the layout. And when I press update PCB from schematic, look what happens. I can now place them here on my PCB. So now we finally have components here. We can also connect them using traces. But the goal of this video is not to show you how to make PCBs. The goal is to show you how to make cheap PCBs. So let's go to the JLC PCB tools. So you can see there are three components that are detected and we can now assign an LCSC number. So let's start with the 100 nano farad capacitor, assign LCSC number. Now it successfully searched the library for 0603 package. You see a lot of different capacitors that I could pick. How do you decide which one you should pick? Well, for the capacitor, you need to always look at the voltage. So that's important. Also, all of them are MLCC capacitors, but there are different types of ceramics and different types of manufacturers are slightly different in the behavior. So if we pick one and say show part details, then we get some specifics about the temperature coefficient, for example, and the tolerance. And we could open the data sheet and check it out. So that's really cool, really cool. Let's say this is a very simple project and I don't really care. I would like to pick the cheapest 100 nanofarad capacitor. If you want to pick the cheapest option, then you should unselect this checkbox here. Include extended parts because this is where we get to the cheap stuff. This right here is the cheapest capacitor that you can use for your design in this specific case. And if it fits your needs, then this is perfect. Now, why is this the cheapest? One, because it's a basic component. JLC PCB offers basic components and extended components. The reason why is if you order these PCBs, these PCBs are assembled by machines. And in order to assemble them, you need to feed the machine with the components. Some of these machines are already equipped with these basic components. This is a very small selection of parts that are very often used in designs. If you pick some of these basic components then you don't have to pay for something called loading costs because they, they need to find the reel and they need to put it into the machine and they will charge you $3 for it, which is fair because it's manual labor. So, so especially if you order low quantities, if you stick to this basic components, you can save a lot of money. For example, if we open this on the website, you see the price of this component is $0.002. But if we would pick an extended part, then we have to pay for the loading. So let's select the basic part. Let's continue with the 10K resistor. Assign it found this 10K resistor here. 100 milliwatts, I will go with that one. And then also 11K, let's check it. Oh, now that's a problem. We don't have a 11K basic component. So what are our options here? Well, we could include extended parts and just pick this one, right? If we open the page, we see that it costs $0.001, which is very cheap, but we have to add $3 for the loading costs. For one PCB, the price would be $3 for this resistor. So how could we avoid this cost? Well, we have a 10K resistor and they also have 
a 1k basic component. Hmm. So what we could do here is first we save the mappings and we close it. We go back to the schematic and we change the schematic a little bit. We add another resistor and we say, hmm, this one is 1k and this one is 10k. So effectively we still have 11k. We now are using two basic components for this. Let's save and go back to the PCB. Let's update the PCB based on the schematic. Update PCB, close. We have one more component here. Great. So this one goes here, this one goes here. And now we have the same circuit. Let's save it and let's assign some basic components. So let's assign a 10k basic component here, select part, and also assign the 1k basic component, this one, select parts. So now everything is assigned and I'm ready to generate the fabrication files. So inside of my project folder I now have this folder called JLC PCB with the production files and we get the CLP, we get the BOM, and if we open it up, we see our three different components. We see our location and the Gerber. Also the Gerber is here, production files. In order to order this, we go to GLC PCB, use the production files, Gerber files. It automatically detected the size and now well, <laughs> and now you can see this looks good. Great. You can also watch it in 3D. All right, but there are no parts. So if we would order it like this, we would have no parts. So let's go back to this. I want PCB assembly. So let's add components, keep it on economic if possible, because then it's cheaper. Let's Continue, next. So we need the BOM file. Let's upload the BOM file. We need the CLP file. Let's upload the CLP file. Next, can double check if everything is fine. And we go next. And now we can see that we actually have components on the PCB, which is great. That's what we want, next. So as you can see, the total price is now um, $11.59, which is crazy for PCBA. I think I might never sold a part again. One final money saving tip. JLC PCB liked my last video and left a $5 voucher for both new and existing customers. You can grab it from my previous video or just copy the code directly from the description below. This voucher stacks with all the cost saving techniques we just covered. So, you're now fully equipped to create the most affordable PCBs possible. If you like this video, you know what to do. Also make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. Subscribing without ringing the bell is like installing a doorbell but never connecting the wires. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.